A few nights back, the Lakers received 15 fourth quarter foul shots, not including after the Raptors started intentionally fouling. More sketchy calls will be covered in part two of my last video. We'll also cover Paul George, aka Push Off P, getting away with four push offs leading to direct baskets, one push off which led to the game seal and triple. Regarding the most rigged NBA game ever a night before, which I did partly cover in my last upload, there were wrong calls I didn't have access to at the time that weren't covered. Check out my last upload for even more sketchy missed calls that won't be looked at in today's vid, but given similar bias against the raps took place against the Clips, I thought we'd talk about that game as well as more from the most rigged NBA game ever against the Lakers. I know some of you are saying to yourself d is just being a biased Raptor fan, but given referee bias has been a common theme around the league as a whole this season, I think it's a good idea for any fan base to let their voice be heard about wrongdoings from officials. Given these refs aren't fined, yet have more control over the game than in any sport, hoop fans must speak up on the regular. That's what I'm about to do for a second straight vid. So if you're not in the 11.8% of those who are subscribed, please splash that sub box, splash that like button, and follow your boy on Instagram and Twitter at DeepFlowHoops. Thank you the utmost to each and every one of you for watching in the first place, as I couldn't do this without your support of this channel. As I alluded to in a tweet yesterday, the fresh rules Adam Silver's implemented over the last few years aren't being followed by his refs, specifically the recent rule which made lean-in for contact fouls illegal. Before the 2021-22 NBA season, the commissioner implemented a rule disallowing shooters from leaning into defenders for foul calls. As you're about to see, this rule is being utterly ignored by officials, seemingly having not been properly taught to them. After this baseball bounce entry pass from James to Vanderbilt, Boucher displays legal forearm-to-body defense. Vanderbilt leans back into him, baiting the official into thinking the contacts happened because of Boucher being out of position. On top of that, for the second time in just under a minute, the officials shockingly go against the official NBA rulebook, sad considering the rule they aren't following is brand new and should be a point of emphasis. After Schroeder stays right with Russell, D'Lo leans in and sweeps through Dennis's arm to unnaturally initiate contact. How some officials can be so oblivious to the rulebook is mind-boggling and frustrating to fans across the NBA, as by not following what's written in code, the refs must think basketball fans are stupid or something. Every single non-casual follower of the league knows what's illegal and what isn't, so why do officials not follow certain rules? Me personally, I don't get it, but going back to my tweet from yesterday and also mentioned in it was that when making their calls, refs aren't taking into account legal positioning from defenders in order to avoid fouling quickly does his best to go up vertically on this bit of help before slightly grazing Davis while Barnes goes perfectly straight up but in a one point game during the clutch, it's Laker free throws. Also as you can see from another angle right here, this should be an offensive foul on Davis if anything as he hits Barnes across the face with his right arm. On this next play, I want you to note how Siakam establishes himself in the path of Davis which the league states as a fundamental way to defend. As you can see, like I noted with Boucher before, Siakam displays legal forearm to body defensive positioning. Then Siakam makes a play on the ball, but with under 35 seconds left in a one point game, extremely minor contact gets Davis to the charity stripe, with the ref waiting to see the ball bounce off the backboard before making his call. The waiting to see if it goes in before blowing the whistle methods become a very popular one among refs. On a separate note, based off how Davis got away with arguably more contact defending this drive from Barnes, the inconsistency is real. Those four more than questionable calls favoring the Lakers in the fourth quarter, paired with the four separate officiating mistakes in that same 12 minute span looked at in my last video, make it enough for me to proclaim this as the most rigged NBA game I've ever witnessed. On the second night of a back-to-back, -back, the Raps again were dealt the short end of the stick when it came to referee decision making, and in this case, it was a lack of decision making that cost the Raptors, as the officials swallowed their whistle on four different offensive fouls, all of which were initiated by Paul George, which led to points against Toronto that shouldn't have been. Michael Jordan was able to hide this push off to seal the 1998 finals damn elusively, so refs have felt like they can let any push off slide ever since. This was exemplified between the Clippers and Raptors, where on the first possession we're looking at, George first swipes away at the arm of McDaniels, then pushes off for a second time in one drive, elbowing Jalen in the stomach to open up room for the floater. Swallowing the whistle part two takes place in the right corner, where another George elbow to the stomach occurs with Paul's arm fully extending on the push off to knock over the much smaller Schroeder, 
no call, and George has a wide open lane for a momentum shifting dunk after an illegal maneuver. This next play features the most subtly bad call of the night, but according to the NBA rulebook, an offensive player may not push off their defender in any way, given George quickly yet noticeably latches onto and pulls back on Jonte Porter's lead arm before ducking into his drive. Paul should be whistled for an offensive foul, and the Raptors should have a chance to tie on the next possession. Porter dashing down the lane, off the window and in. PG's next push off would seal his team the win, as this evident high velocity shove is most shockingly not called because veteran official and the respected among his peers Tony Brothers has a clear view of it. Another swallowing of the whistle though, and after a fourth illegal maneuver, this would lead to a fourth illegal bucket. Attacks on Barrett. Kawhi driven off the line. George beats the buzzer to three. Oh, it's gone! In what turned out to be a six point game, these non-calls, which should have been offensive fouls, were massive factors in the Clippers pulling out the win. That made it too straight for the Raps in terms of a loss being heavily impacted by subpar officiating. Out of all the calls that haven't gone their way over the past two, which one in particular has been the worst in your opinion though? Best answer gets next video shoutout. Top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by June 21st earn free NBA merch of their choosing. Today's two shoutouts from my last two uploads go to firstly Joel Ranger who says in response to how the NBA needs to fix officiating, we need an unbiased review of questionable fouls slash coaches challenges, like an AI program, preferably programmed by an unbiased third party and not the NBA. If bad officiating is identified often enough, whether due to bias or mistakes, it offers a good performance appraisal on the officiating that can weed out refs that likely should not be working anymore. Second commenter shoutout goes to Principles Gaines, who says, in response to whether or not the Raptors should trade Pascal, I believe Siakam and the Raptors can mend the conflict, yet I feel that Messiah is under the pacified ire of the front-running passionate Toronto sport fandom. Keep Siakam and face the scrutiny if he leaves for nothing across the pantheon of the NBA community, or trade him for a decent deal not as good as this OG Masterclass trade. Either way, I've questioned but never lost faith in Masai, so I'm sure he'll steer this pivot decision in the right way for the franchise. Great takes from both Community Speaks winners. Again, leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks for your chance to win free merch when the Speaks standings are set on June 21st. Appreciate you. Have a good one. Deflow signing off.